live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. The heartbroken parents of a UTAS student who was the victim of a brutal attack are pleading he be allowed to stay in Australia to recover. Devashi Decker's family and friends now calling on the community to support them and for government leaders to step up. Dave Deeker travelled from India with dreams of studying accounting before a serious alleged assault in Salamanca last November left him a paraplegic. He now spends his days recovering in hospital. At this moment, it is very difficult for me to save him. His parents going the distance to support his recovery. Kula and Dapali now banding with close friends, calling for him to be granted permanent residency. And he cannot survive without it. There is no option for him to survive without a permanent residency. The reason I'm saying that is because he needs specialised care. A petition now launched urging the Immigration Minister to allow him to stay in Australia, also insisting the Premier uses his power. Permanent residency is something that is required if, if he uh, is going to obtain the support for NDIS and rehabilitative services. I'll certainly be considering uh, what's been put forward and I know the Premier will as well. Dave's story has already captured the hearts of many. A previous GoFundMe raising over $88,000 to help fly his parents to Tasmania. They're hoping the community backs them this time round just as much. And it's my humble request that please come forward and support. But until that happens, Dave and his devastated family remain in limbo. That's one important thing that he mentioned is, I don't want to go back. The Home Affairs Office didn't respond to a request for comment. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Tech advancements are endangering the privacy and personal information of Tasmanians, according to a leading law reform institute. With our legislative protections labelled fragmented, there are calls for the government to take action. A crucial piece of health infrastructure, the New Oatlands Ambulance Station will service the centre of Tasmania. We started here approximately two months ago and we're scheduled to be completed by January 2025. To attract paramedics here, uh, we, we, do need to, we do need to have good facilities for them to work out of. The Health Minister says more stations are coming at Signet, Snug, Lagana and King Island. Also today responding to Tasmanian Law Reform Institute calls to beef up privacy laws. This is a very important uh, area, it's an evolving area of the law and so law reform is important and I look forward to reviewing the report. The report recommends a swathe of reforms including legislation to enable civil action over breaches of privacy, a data breach notification scheme and state-based laws against sharing non-consensual intimate images, which Tasmania is the only state without. We're sharing a large amount of information about us and there's growing concern about the security of that data. The laws that relate to privacy at the time when they were written weren't specifically written with the types of technology that we have now in mind. With Taswater's 3.5% bill hike adding to cost of living pain from July 1, Labor's concerned it's a customer base already under stress, with more than 2,000 defaulting on payment plans in the last year. We're not saying that the state government can fix the cost of living crisis, but it should be doing what it can. We have amongst the highest concessions for Tasmanians who, who deserve it and need it. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The Hobart office of the ABC has been the target of a vandalism attack. Red and black paint splattered with a message about the Israel-Palestine conflict. The words, tell the truth, all eyes on Rafa, graffitied across the outside sign. Police say they're investigating the incident and are calling on anyone with information to come forward. Weeks of industrial action at a Bernie dairy factory are starting to bite, according to the union. Since walking off the job for a ninth time Sunday night amid a pay dispute with dairy giant Saputo, maintenance workers say breakdowns are affecting production, claiming the factory has been unable to manufacture pressed cheeses today after slowing yesterday. The dispute centres around a 21% pay gap compared to the company's interstate employees. 
A push by Clarence Councillor James Walker to look at Blunston as an alternative location for the controversial AFL High Performance Centre has fallen short. Councillors voting against the motion 6-5 at last night's meeting. I'm trying to look for ways to unite a community that has needlessly become divided. Concerns raised at a fiery community meeting about the proposal for Rosney Parklands have also been presented to Council. An entire aged care centre in the northwest has had to be evacuated and 15 staff were sent to hospital after a suspected gas leak. Authorities haven't yet been able to pinpoint the exact source of the leak at the Port Sorrel facility. Staff at Rubicon Grove first detected a smell of gas in the early hours of the morning. Residents confined to their rooms while workers attempted to trace the source. We um, had members of staff come from Burnie but also Launceston to support um, all of our staff on site. Again, making sure that resident safety was priority number one. Some elderly residents, including 81-year-old Colin Benbow, unaware that anything was amiss. No, I didn't smell gas. I didn't know what was going on. Um, this morning they just uh, kept us in our rooms for a while. By 8am, with the smell of gas still persisting, it was decided to enact the facility's emergency evacuation plan. All 80 residents and staff of the aged care facility were successfully evacuated to the car park. Those experiencing symptoms of nausea were transported to hospital. In total there were 13 patients transported to hospital, all in a stable condition and they were a mix of both staff and residents. Tasmanian Fire Service conducted an extensive investigation of the facility, including the kitchen, but were unable to find the source of the leak. We've used multiple forms of detection equipment that we have available to us also and um, in the time that we've been here on site we haven't actually uh, detected anything. The facility was deemed to be safe for residents who were able to return to their rooms. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Dozens of defendants have spent two years or more in prison, awaiting trial as the backlog of cases in Tasmania's Supreme Court continues to balloon. The figures released as the court's annual report from last financial year is revealed. Our state's highest court is bogged down, cases coming in faster than they can be cleared. New figures show the number of criminal trials pending as of June last year jumping to 743, a 14% increase. 157 cases have been waiting for longer than two years, 20% more than the same time last year. 30 to 40 people in custody waiting for their cases to be heard for at least over two years. 29 criminal appeals were also pending, up from 12. Justice delayed is justice denied and it is concerning, but I can't see how this government can respond when they've wrecked the budget. Unlike other states, the Department of Public Prosecution schedules cases, not the courts. Lawyers say this adds inefficiency. They then prioritise which matters need to be heard first based on availability of the DPP prosecutor rather than um, which matter is ready to go. The number of civil cases caught in the backlog is rising as well, 200 more than two years prior. Attorney-General Guy Barnett says the appointment of Justice Michael Daly as the first associate judge to have criminal and civil jurisdiction will improve efficiency, adding the appointment of additional acting judges is also helping. But fewer lawyers are being admitted in Tasmania and there's a desperate need for more of them to practice criminal law. There are not many experienced um, trial-ready lawyers in uh, Tasmania, if legal aid increases their fees, um, then private firms would see some benefit or merit in doing criminal cases. Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmania News. Men Shed Tasmania, Aurora Energy and TAS Networks are hoping to boost energy literacy among Tasmanians. Launching a co-created initiative designed to help people make informed decisions and navigate the energy landscape. Men's Shed members are trading in the hammer to sharpen their skills in other areas. The Power People program hoping to spark confidence in power use amongst Tasmanians. Encourage people to understand their power usage and to control the cost of power to them. 
Men shed members will be trained to become power people, arming them with basic skills to understand usage, manage costs and make informed decisions, and helping to spread the information within their local communities. Community reps that are trusted in their local community delivering the message is going to be far more powerful. Two, they, they've helped co-create this program. With many Tasmanians struggling with cost of living, it's hoped the initiative will build the skills and knowledge needed to find the best possible ways to power their homes and businesses. The cost of living at the moment is, is difficult for some people, energy is part of that, so the more we can do to help people lower their energy costs. Taking simple steps to reduce some hip pocket pain. Making sure that lights are used appropriately, changing older uh, appliances for more modern appliances. Which it can be a small investment but it can save you money over time. We still want people to, uh, to maximise the benefits, finding ways that they can do it better and cheaper and cleaner. It'll be rolled out across six men's sheds with plans to expand the program. Rebecca Gaydineris, 7, Tasmania News. Hobart Council has greenlit further planning for more inner city bike lanes. Detailed designs for new lanes on Collins Street between Mole and Murray Streets will now be developed. 59 parking bays would be removed and the Victoria Street intersection reconfigured. The council claims there's excess demand for spots to leave your car in the vicinity and it would encourage more active transport. It's hoped the life and musical legacy of Tasmanian-born opera soprano Amy Sherwin may soon be honoured with a marble statue in Hobart's Theatre Royal. The proposed installation would be the first public full-length marble statue of a woman in Tasmania. So it's a very fitting uh, way in which to bring Amy Sherwin and her wonderful story back to life. Called the Tasmanian Nightingale by international audiences, Sherwin died penniless in 1935. Organisers are asking the community to contribute to the $250,000 project. Tasmania is bringing potential trade partners straight to the source, spending $600,000 to take international buyers on a tour of 50 exporters around the state in July. The Saver Tasmania plan given a nod of support from industry at a trade roundtable, hoping to boost Tasmania's presence in the export market. The Jack Jumpers third and final import is marching across from another ant army. American guard Craig Sword signing a one-year deal with Tasmania after playing in the NBA G League with the Indiana Mad Ants. The 6 foot 3 veteran will arrive by early August in time for pre-season. The undefeated Canterbury men know they have a huge target on their backs in the Premier League hockey. They're promising to roll out a few surprises this week after beating lower ranked Derwent by just one goal. Played pretty similar the first eight games, so um, I think we'll change it up going forward and, and try and spice it up a little bit. I think we've got the got the room and definitely the talent to be able to try try a couple of new things. The women are still pushing for finals despite sitting second last on the ladder after a 4-0 win. There's a long way to go yet in this season and we've seen through the results in other games that it's going to be a little bit all over the show. Blair has switched from playing to coaching as she awaits the, right, the arrival of a baby. And Tasmanian Tiger Bo Webster has backed up yesterday's career best bowling figures with a stellar knock, smashing 76 off 79 balls, including 11 boundaries for Gloucestershire over in England. The four day county match ending in a draw. Let's hope he can keep it up when he gets back home, Kim. Mm, good innings. Thank you very much, Nick. We'll stay with us. Your weather forecast is coming up next with Murph. Good evening. Hobart 15 degrees today, Launceston and Burnie 19 and Devonport 17 with most maximum temperatures above average. St Helens and Friendly Beaches 19, King and Flinders Islands 18, Low Head and Grove 17 degrees. It was 16 at Bushy Park and Strawn had 15. Extensive cloud today brought a scattered shower or two over southern districts, patchy cloud further north. On the bigger picture, a mid-level cloud band moved over Western Australia ahead of a strong cold front and just some patchy cloud over Queensland and the Northern Territory. Tomorrow a high is located near the New South Wales coast and that will be pushing a warmer northwesterly airstream our way as the cold front approaches from the west. So those northwesterly winds will reach 10 to 20 knots over most waters but peaking at 20 to 30 knots over the west and south with a 4.5 metre swell. Strong wind warning has been issued for waters between south east Cape and Stanley along with the south west lakes. 
19 to mostly sunny for Hobart tomorrow. Same for Jeeveston, a top of 18 for Bothwell. Launceston looking at 18 degrees and partly cloudy. Devonport 17 along with Cressy. Burnie tomorrow, a high of 17 degrees and mostly sunny. Fine for Strawn 2, 18 the top and 17 for Curry on King Island. While for St Helens, a sunny 18 degrees, 19 for Swansea, sunny for Orford and 18 tomorrow. Now on Thursday, the rain will start to develop as the cold front arrives. Persistent showers over the west and north on Friday with isolated showers elsewhere and on Saturday fine apart from light showers clearing the west and south and further north tomorrow few storms for Perth a top there of uh, just 17 degrees fine in Adelaide 23 the maximum Melbourne 18 degrees a cold start for Canberra minus three to a sunny afternoon fine for Sydney but showers on the way for Brisbane Bit of cloud over Hobart, 13 currently, 13 also in Launceston, clear in Devonport and 14 degrees Kim, I'm going to pretend this is Friday, I'll see you next week Oh, holidays again, living the life of the rich and famous. And that is all your news for now. Thanks for joining us tonight.